I'm Cameron Whitbeck, and I'm going to be reading you some poems about the Upper Peninsula in honor of And Here, A Hundred Years of Upper Peninsula Writing, available now from Michigan State University Press. Okay, I'm going to start off with a poem called How Many March Snowstorms Does It Take to Break a Michigander's Heart? 31. That 31st will split you like a cord, a striped maple, I'm kidding. In Michigan, we're cheap woods, some punked pine barely worth the burn. We take pride in being knotted in the birch worm that Detroit's become in the burl that manpower forms. Michigan's march is full of jokes. My favorite is the equinox. I've never seen a green 21st outside of the Remus Tavern. In Michigan, we pray to the weather god. It's mostly death threats and heavy breathing. The meanest sons of bitches on the planet live in Michigan. We call them weathermen, but only to their faces. Those goddamn sadists with their goddamn jobs. Forget Doppler and every other radar duct tape to the water tower. Here, our hips always hurt. Every Michigander is afraid of being afraid of for the snow to pull back in. We're all from some town where once everyone froze or burned up in a fire. I know Paul Bunyan isn't real because he has a job. Michigan's is a mission of bitching about salt trucks and plows that never come, about guessing which drift the mailbox might be. If snow was the plague, Michigan would be empty from self-inflicted flagellation deaths. We deserve winter. It's what you get for loving the lions. In the memory of every Michigander, there was one march when a warm wind swept across the Gitches and put a thaw to our meanness when we burrowed out of our homes to relearn the word for sun. We walked in droves to the party store in our pockets. We kept our hearts between our fingertips like fragile checks made out to cash. Uh, and the second poem I'm going to read you is from and here. Uh, it's called Cripple. I saw someone walk the way you walk, and I thought you were leaving. You've been dreaming of wolves again. Snow is coming, you can feel it in your knee. I stand in the kitchen cutting potatoes, onions, mushrooms. I can think of nothing but the snow in your knee. You come home, you insist on walking. I scrape my knife clean and leave it in the sink. You speak with your hands of a man you met who lost two brothers this fall. You tell me that the wolves in your dreams are asking you to leave for the winter. You want to go. You want to run again, feel tendons push bone beneath skin. As you talk, I look out the window and pray for snow to come and lock your knee, for it to fall and fall and fall and never leave. Okay. Uh, and the last poem I'm going to is about how uh, Gichigumi can indeed get you. It's called uh, Mishu Pishu in the Garden of the Drought. The horned lynx, spirit king of unbreathing, trolls the forest at the bottom of the lake. His orchard in the petrified timber blooms with the fruit of human driftwood. Superior's frozen jetsam. He glides between them, their floating hands, the niche in stasis, the capsized fins. The underwater panther pauses in the quiet pressure of death. A young girl, her dress buttoned with rotten blackberries, is moving like sink or breathe, like she'll take anything but another silent decade beneath the riptides. Mishu Pishu, Manitou of teeth, loves to see her try, so he holds her in the pocket of his jaw. His tongue can't help but taste this little miracle, this putrid swimmer, the tang of sheep oil, the bouquet of pine pollen, the saline of her toes. Together they climb towards the powder burn of sun. The wild cat of wet night surprises himself. He's rooting for her. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure to check out And Here.